Hi Bulls fans, I promise to be better on video this time because Larry told me I was bad. So uh, today, Go Boy's playing against Chris Long. You might recognize some of his armies. We're gonna start with his since mine's all the way over there. It makes it easier when I get over there. So Chris, <laughs> what are you playing today? Um, I'm playing a Admech War Convocation um, with a Champions of Fenris Detachment and a Huexus Assassin. Um, so I'll go through from this side and over. Um, honored your Dune Crawler with Icarus Array. Um, I have a Knight. Uh, it's not actually a Lancer in this game, it's just a Knight Errant. Um, that is a single Servitor from my Champions Detachment. Um, I have a unit of Skatari Rangers um, with my uh, Magos Warlord who got Eternal Warrior for his Warlord trait. Um, I have Skatari Vanguard with three Plasma Calibers and uh, Arc Pistol and Maul on the uh, Squad Leader and then all the upgrades because they're free for the Convocation. Um, over here in these ruins, I have a squad of Rust Stalkers that's scattered up. Um, and then in reserves, I have um, a Balistari outflanking, a unit of Infiltrators outflanking, a single Servitor just walking on, a uh, Qexus in a drop pod, and two units of Heavy Grav um, Destroyers in drop pods, uh, one of which has a Wolf Priest attached to it. There's a, a missing drop pod because I'm bad. I did bring the knight, so... He's just gonna have to kill one. I, I'm just gonna have to pretend to kill one. So I'm bringing something that I've been wanting to try for a while because I think it's dumb. Um, it's a trip lance with a crazy psyker bomb. Uh, I've got Inquisition, and then you add in the Library's Conclave. I've got Tiggy, I've got a regular library in level two and another library in two, Cotees, an Inquisitor level one, a Psycho, and then attached with five Crusaders. I've got two little basic Psyker squad, which is a Psyker, two Alkalites. And then, of course, on my Trip Lance, and each of them have uh, the Barrage missile, because I'm going to give them Rending with a Tiggy, because of Tiggy Special Arts, he's my Warlord. Um, Power-wise, I rolled most of the good ones, some weird ones, so uh, the chances are good I'll have two up Sanctuary save, and all kinds of other nonsense. But the Collectors will probably turn that all off and make sure I, will, I won't you know, survive. Uh, mission we're playing, uh, ITC Mission 6. It's pretty simple, it's Crusade with four objectives. Um, you gotta hold one is number one, hold number two is number two, kill a unit is three, kill a unit is four, have scoring in enemy deployment zone, and have three scoring in your own zones number six. So um, it's Mission 6 on ITC, we'll put a link to it where you can see them, that way you can read this and make more sense of what the heck we're doing. Um, these little dice are my servo skulls because I can't find the ones I made years ago at home. Uh, I have the first turn. We're gonna roll to see what missions are going. I'll explain at the end of the turn, and uh, we'll go from there and see if I can kill anything. Well, we had a really stupid turn. So remember there was a bunch of guys out here in the middle of the table? So I shot most of my knights at them. One guy survived. Threw minus one cover, feel no pains. He's a boss. So he survived all my shooting. Uh, the best thing though is when he came down with all of this, Kletus scattered out of range, so basically I lost powers on my knights, but these guys aren't going to not still have warp charge. Um, these guys went to ground and made eight? Eight, yeah. Eight three up saves because of the knight fight. Uh, Chris forgot that you can't charge after scout because uh, it's like the first time you played this army. Yeah. Um, this knight did move up and uh, didn't do anything because I made my save. He has the melt a cannon. Um, but which one did the wound to? Which one did the hole? This, but, this guy did. Okay, that guy did a whole point to the one knight, so there's, there's a whole point. And uh, <laughs> that's about it. We really didn't do a whole lot. No first blood. No first blood yet. We both got one of our uh, objectives, which was we have three in our score, in a deployment zone with no enemies. He's all out of 12 inches from my uh, deployment zone, and he has lots of guys over there in his deployment zone, so I mean, I'm not gonna get over there. So pretty much we're tied one and one and now we're kind of moving up and going from there. So I have a feeling I'm gonna to try to kill a bunch of these guys here and then hopefully get some stomping action going and get like, you know, con charge two of those guys and start going crazy with it. Um, I do have to kill a drop pod, so Chris has a drop pod to come down. So that's, that is my only plan is to get first blood by killing a drop pod. But that's it for this turn, on to the next one. Thanks guys. So now Larry's watching me, so I gotta tape better. So uh, yeah, there was a lot of stuff here. As you saw at the end of turn one, uh, my knights went cray cray and uh, killed a lot of stuff. Uh, I killed the assassin through uh, battle cannons hitting the other guys and hitting him and killing him. Um, I killed those guys over there and he assaulted me and I killed him here. Yeah, the, uh, the rust stalkers. The rust stalkers. Um, 
Well, the assassin gone, all my powers came back up because I moved these guys back 12 so they could still uh, generate spells and cast. Since I scattered back. Since scattered back, and that's pretty much what, that's pretty much where the game kind of went went down. This poor knight, I haven't done anything to him. He hasn't done anything, oh, he put one whole point on me and nothing this last turn. Now, these guys didn't do a whole lot. Chris ran up because we rolled a hold objective two and get someone in my deployment zone, which Chris both got. I just have to hold objective two, which is right there. Um, Chris missed his other drop pod coming in with more uh, grab guys. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go this way to go towards the night or just murder stuff over here. It depends on what I roll to see what my uh, maelstrom objectives. But I did end up getting first blood and did kill one drop pod so Chris wouldn't have a drop pod issue, but it didn't matter. I didn't roll. It didn't matter. So on to turn three. All right, not a lot happened that turn. I had ended up rolling two, two kilo units. I killed a bunch of stuff over there, so I got that. Um, Chris had kill a unit and then get something in my zone, which he did with those guys here, he drop potted in. Um, when they don't have their power, like, uh, re-rolling up, they don't do that well against guys with five of armor, so they survived. Um, this knight tried to shoot the same guys and it scattered and put a, uh, didn't put a whole point on one of the knights. They continue to not do much over there. Um, I just killed everything that came up in front of me, but again, it's gonna be kind of hard, so I gotta kind of move out, and I think I'm gonna have to uh, move forward and get in his zone, because my next rolls were hold number one, which is right here, and get something in his zone, which I'm gonna try to do and deny him the three in his zone, and the hold one, which I don't think I can stop, because it's over there behind that building. Chris, what do you think is going on? How, how this army is very, very uh, extreme. Yeah, well, I don't think I've killed any of your models yet. No. Um, so. I, I caused some perils to myself, that's what happened. There, there's that. Um, and hull points. Two to this one guy right here who fell over and broke his shoulder pad. So, that's the revenge. So I don't know, like I said, this army is pretty, like Chris had that turn to really do a lot of damage with uh, the assassin and the scatter back just ruined it. So we're gonna finish on this own turn and see, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so that was the end one. The knight charged in, he went through cover because that's where the closest guy was, and then I killed it. He did uh, scatter, blew up, and did uh, two whole points to bring this guy to three to get Chris an extra point, but I gained two from that one. Um, these guys uh, with the Catacomb Destroyers, with the grab cannons. Yep. Um, Catacomb Destroyers, they again try to shoot there, but without any kind of twiddling to roll, any kind of hit like you see in Centurion Devastators, they just don't do nearly the damage. I need, almost need that grab amp of some sort. And yeah, a reroll of some, so, some sort. Of some side of it. Um, those guys over there continue to not do anything, um, but they're over there. I can't get rid of them. I'm not going to get his Warlord. Uh, he's probably not going to get my Warlord unless I roll like double sixes and explode myself over here with Tigerius. Um, so we're going to finish off this turn five. I rolled uh, kill a unit and get uh, and have a three scoring in my zone. Chris rolled get into uh, three scoring in his zone as well as hold one. So Chris is going to probably get that one, and that's what's going to kind of keep it up closer, but it looks like I'm probably gonna win Maelstrom, and then we're gonna we're gonna split on Crusade unless Chris rolls a crap ton of ones on this side. So that's pretty much it from here. Um, we're gonna finish off this turn five and see where we're at from there, and that's probably gonna be the end of the game. Would you say that, Chris? Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk more about it towards the end. All right, so that end of the turn five, the game is over. I end up winning nine to seven because I finally killed that one guy that I kept trying to kill. Uh, I just was, went ahead and wasted a, uh, yeah, 9 to 7 on Maelstrom. 9 to 7 on Maelstrom, so I won Maelstrom. We tied on Crusade. I got First Blood and Line Breaker. Chris got Line Breaker and um, didn't kill any Warlords, so that made me win. Uh, I won the Maelstrom. 6 to 1. 6 to 1. Yeah, 4 points for the Maelstrom, 1 for the Line Breaker, 1 for First Blood, and I just got 1 for Line Breaker. Right. So, um, this list is a little... Uh, very binary, very weird, like it basically, it's a very extreme and towards that one direction. It can be very pain in the ass. Um, it's so reliant on psychic powers uh, to keep going off, but it also, you know, if you don't have any way to really kill knights, it's a real pain in the ass. Well, and also, I mean, they're, uh, you know, the list is very powerful, but I still think I probably would have killed more than one model, I think except so. for that you didn't fail any saves. Uh, that was that. There was a rough <laughs> 15 wounds to my uh, unit that had Sanctuary with two up sh uh, shield in front, I made 15 two ups. I had to roll him one at a time, which I really hate because it, once it went back there, it went to Tigerius, which meant he probably would have died with the perils I did. So he perils a lot. So uh, overall, um, it's an interesting list. Uh, yeah, overall I killed uh, one warrior acolyte, 
two wounds to Tiberius via, via uh, perils, uh, two whole points to that knight, and three whole points to that knight. Um, uh, so yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm thankful for ITC to making a uh, blast hit invisibility because uh, if he couldn't hit blast with this, uh, this unit would be stupid. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. Um, that's kind of what happened. I wanted to test this game out. Chris, thank you for letting me test this stupid army out. I didn't want to bring it to a fun night because this is not a fun list. Always a pleasure. I am happy to cut my teeth with this new army and uh, yeah. I probably learned a few things at least uh, when not to forget my rules. So. Well, was it the first time you played it? Yep. Yeah, so he was like, oh, hey, doesn't it do this? Doesn't it have a six up vulnerable save? Doesn't it have this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot that rule. <laughs> what are you going to do for your uh, Mechanicus drop pods? How are you going to make them different? Um, I'm actually uh, ordering them from a buddy who uh, designed them all in like an AutoCAD program and laser cut them out. And they're, uh, they're actually made of MDF wood. They're really awesome looking and themed with the army, which is you know not like you usually see with uh, <laughs> pods. Yeah, it's going to look awesome. Yeah, it's going to be exciting when this thing gets done. Um, when's, any, when's the next event you're hopefully going to? We gotta... uh, I think I'm trying to go to the uh, tabletop uh, LVO primer. Uh, down in San Antonio in December. I think uh, you're headed to that too, and we got a, a good Austin group going down there. Yeah, I think we're gonna try to play on there and have a good time. I would probably, if I get time, I'll bring my Grey Knight list that I wanna test out really bad. Or uh, you bring this stupid thing. Or I bring this one that is pretty much done. So, uh, or I have to make, paint some uh, librarians better, that way they can actually have a better choice of them. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, thanks for the good game. And again, uh, sorry that if I messed up anything on here. Um, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thanks guys.